All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session, Light Up Your Analytics with Lightning. Uh, hopefully, everybody's having a fantastic Dreamforce. Uh, quick show of hands. How many people are having a solid Dreamforce, a good Dreamforce so far? Woo. All right, All right. It's most of the crowd. So we're, we're going to try to keep, keep that momentum going. And uh, thank you for joining us today. So some quick introductions. My name is Dave Dixon. Uh, I'm Director of Analytics at Atrium AI. We're a platinum Salesforce partner. And a little bit about myself, my background. So I've been working in the Salesforce ecosystem for a little over a decade. Uh, I'm a Salesforce certified consultant in terms of administration, as well as Einstein Analytics and Discovery consultant. And over my 20 year career, I've spent the majority of the time in data warehousing, business intelligence, uh, and the CRM space. Um, additionally, I am a Salesforce uh, champion as well. On a more personal note, uh, I live in Austin, Texas, so I have three rambunctious kids and a uh, very rambunctious husky. Um, love to hit national parks. Went to Big Bend National Park in Yellowstone this year. It's part of my part of the highlights for the year. And um, <coughs> something you're going to find out, which will become apparent throughout the presentation, is I love analytics. I love Einstein analytics. Um, a couple of my favorite features around Einstein analytics. I love compare tables the versatility of what you can do with it. I love time series function. But probably my favorite feature, and one that I don't hear people talk about a lot, is the fact that you get three releases a year, and in every release, it gets better. Um, so I'm not the only one up here speaking today. With me, I've also got my friend and colleague, Patrick Shifley. So Pat, you want to introduce yourself? Certainly, yeah. Welcome to 2019 Dreamforce, everybody. Hope you're having a great time while you're here. I'm Patrick Shifley. I'm an analytics lead with Atrium AI, and I'm colleagues with Dave here. Uh, just a few points about my personal background is uh, I'm an avid mountain biker and outdoor enthusiast. So as you can see, there's some trees in the background there, trees on the slide. That's why I'm smiling so big. I really enjoy like being outdoors. Uh, some cool things that I've done this year is kind of some uh, downhill mountain biking races that I participated in, a little on the edgy side, as well as doing some backcountry snowboarding. Uh, in Colorado with my son. Uh, the irony in that is I'm actually from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there are no mountains near me. Uh, so that kind of stinks. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm actually uh, happy to announce I'm a father of three and husband of one there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So on a more technical note, though, if we could advance the slide there, uh, I've been in the Salesforce space uh, for a little over 12 years now. Uh, in that capacity, I've been able to achieve about five Salesforce certifications of which I'll point out with my cool laser pointer, the Einstein Analytics and Discovery Consultant certification that I recently passed. I'm super proud of that. It's crazy hard. If anybody out there took that, uh, you'll know what I mean. Uh, but essentially, uh, some cool features that I learned about as I was studying for that exam was essentially, uh, and this probably sounds silly, but uh, lightning events and tying that with embedded analytics. I think, uh, ironically, is our topic today, but it's also a very cool feature of Salesforce, and I think it kind of extends a lot of that UI framework for a good customer journey. But then also uh, Dashboard Designer, which I think allows me, uh, I'm more of a UI guy, so I like to kind of play in the, uh, the customer experience and the UI UX capabilities of the Dashboard Designer. So uh, I'll turn it back over to Dave, and essentially he's gonna walk us through some of the agenda items that we're gonna cover today. Uh, and essentially just talk a little bit about what you can expect to learn from our session. Dave? All right. Yeah, thanks, Pat. There you go. Sure. All right. I suspect most of you have seen this, given that it is uh, day two of Dreamforce. So this is our safe harbor <laughs> statement. And uh, really, it's just a reminder to base your purchasing decisions based on currently available capabilities within the tool. So why are we here? What are, what are we going to talk about today? Um, obviously, we're here to learn about the power of combining Einstein with lightning, lightning events, Aura. Um, but we're gonna set the stage a little bit as we kind of walk through this. And we're gonna talk about Einstein analytics, sort of a capabilities and functional perspective of, of Einstein analytics. We're gonna talk about some of the benefits you'd receive by combining Einstein analytics and lightning. And then Pat's gonna dive in and walk us through um, Aura events, how they work, how that framework events, or how that framework works. Um, we're gonna talk about how you can achieve some pretty cool things uh, in your lightning pages. Um, and then we're gonna get into a demo and actually walk you through what it looks like in real life, right? Um, then we'll open it up for some Q&A. So we've, 
We've got 40 minutes or so today, which I think should be plenty of time to cover everything. So Einstein Analytics, quick show of hands here. How many folks are familiar with Einstein Analytics, seen it, touched it, know about it? Woo. All right, good so number. Most, most of the organization, most of the people in here, so that's good, that's good. Um, uh, even for those of you that don't know about it, don't worry about it, we're gonna, we're gonna hit the highlights. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons you'd wanna use Einstein Analytics. Uh, it's a super powerful visualization tool, so it allows you to explore data, allows you to sort of answer the next question by drilling down. Um, it's cloud-based, um, so um, you, know, you don't have all that sort of overhead that you would have with a traditional server-based technology. Um, and with Analytics Plus, you get machine learning, AI capability. And so this is a little something more than you'd see in a traditional analytics tool. It uh, really gives you capabilities to make predictions about future outcomes um, and to be more forward-looking, right? Instead of just analyzing what has happened in the past. Um, also, Einstein Analytics, it's an extension of core Salesforce. So as part of that, you get the benefits of a single interface. Um, and then a real key differentiator, I think, with Einstein Analytics is you can go from, action, or from insights to action very quickly, right? And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that here, here in our presentation. So when I talk about Einstein Analytics, this is one of my favorite slides. I, you know, give credit where credit is due. I did not create this slide. This is a uh, standard Salesforce slide. Um, but this slide, I, I call it the four layer cake with frosting. And it's, it's really an architectural or, or a capabilities overview is the way I like to think about it. And if you look down <laughs> at this bottom layer, this foundational layer, enterprise cloud ready, what that's really speaking to is all the benefits you get with the multi-tenant cloud, right? So you get cloud scale. So what do we mean by that? You need to add a thousand users. You don't have to go out and procure more hardware or set up more servers. You just procure more licenses, right? You wanna add another 100 million rows? You just do it. You don't worry about the performance implications of that, right? Additionally, you get all the benefits that come with being in the Salesforce cloud in terms of trailhead and education, right? So if you wanna learn about the tool, you wanna sort of um, learn how to uh, accomplish specific things or general overview, there's a trailhead for that. And so that's really what that enterprise ready cloud foundational layer of this, this four layer cake is. As we move up into the advanced analytics platform, that's speaking to platform capabilities. So, you know, Einstein Analytics, obviously one of the things it does, it's a BI tool. But it's more than a BI tool, it's actually a platform. It's got a full REST API. You can embed Einstein Analytics in non-Salesforce apps. Um, you can pull data in from uh, lots of different places, uh, and you can do it lots of different ways. So it's extensible because it's a platform. Um, and so that's sort of the second layer, the second piece of this foundation. As we keep moving up the stack, we get into this intelligence layer. And the intelligence layer is a real point of differentiation, right? So now we're not just looking in the past, looking at historical data, slicing and dicing, drilling in. We're making predictions around the probability of a future outcome, right? We're looking forward. And we don't have to write a bunch of code. We don't have to go and write Python or write R to do that. We're able to do it within the tool. And as part of that process, we get it explained to us in sort of a story mode, right? So in Einstein Discovery, if you haven't checked out that component, which is part of Einstein Analytics Plus, up on the third floor today uh, in the analytics section, uh, just grab one of the, the Einstein folks. They'd be happy to walk you through it. Um, but it's a real differentiator in terms of capabilities is this intelligence layer, the ability to make predictions about the future. And where we're gonna be spending a lot of our time today is in this topmost layer of the cake, the experience layer. So within Einstein Analytics, you can easily embed your dashboards, right, inside of your page layouts, and you can put insights and information, both traditional analytics and predictive, within the context of where users are working right, within the flow of business. So you'll hear Salesforce talk a lot about the intelligent experience, and that's really about what this is, is surfacing insights, surfacing information where people are gonna use it and making it actionable, right? So that's another piece of what we have on here in this top layer is the action framework. So I can go from insights to 
navigate directly to an opportunity or to add members to a campaign or to just simply chatter and bring people into a conversation around something that I've found, right? And that's all part of that experience layer. So there's one more piece on top of this as we keep moving up. I call it the frosting, um, just because, you know, cake analogy. So that's where we land is on the frosting at the top. But on that top layer, it's really speaking to the templated apps. We're not gonna cover that today, but it's a great feature function of Einstein Analytics. If you haven't checked it out, take a look. Um, so there's things like the sales analytics app, the service analytics app, and by basically running some wizards and running some configurators, you get a whole bunch of very functional dashboards that are useful out of the box with literally zero code. On the left and the right, when we look at this, it's really those two pillars are talking about being able to get information into Einstein analytics. So the Salesforce connectors on the right, we can connect obviously to any of the sales, service cloud, marketing cloud, and on the left, you can pull data in either through an ETL tool like MuleSoft or Informatica, or you can just use one of the out-of-box connectors if you're connecting to a cloud-based data source. So that's a little bit about the Einstein analytics architecture. At this point, I'm gonna turn it back over to Pat and have him walk you through why you would wanna combine lightning and analytics. Pat? Yeah. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys are learning a lot as we go through. Appreciate that. So why would you wanna combine Einstein analytics with lightning events? It's a great question, right? Uh, there are some features of each that are really important, but there are a couple gray areas that I wanna point out. So the first bullet there is really kind of talking a little bit about embedding a dashboard in a page layout. Sure, you can do that, right? Out of the box, you can't really tie it to anything else, though. So it's kind of almost in its same framework, just solo on the page, right? So it kind of tells a little bit about the action framework that Dave pointed out, but it's kind of siloed in that, that Lightning page. Alternatively, Lightning components also provide uh, that cool user experience, right, uh, within the components on a page layout, and you can kind of add and, and structure it kind of like Legos or building blocks on the page, but they really don't tie to the dashboards that you wanna put on the page. So what we were trying to point out in this presentation is that combining the two of those together really kind of sparks some, some real cool intelligent experience with the, the interaction with your dashboard, as well as some lightning components on the page. So Dave's gonna show us a, a walkthrough later in the presentation of where we can select or, or make some selections on a dashboard uh, based on a manager or, or a, a subordinate user, right? And as we're looking at these lightning events that fire off, there are actions that then can kind of pull data in to kind of consume uh, uh, and then provide that information back to some of these lightning components, right? So that way it's a, a one-stop shop for all of your changes, but also it kind of acts as a unified platform on the page layout. So just a quick backstory in my current role, uh, I've actually struggled with this. Um, just creating a dashboard and putting on the page layout, simple, right? And you can add some filters and some different things on it that make it a little bit more dynamic for your users, right? If I wanna put it on an account page, I can dynamically filter it by the account ID, for example. And it pulls up all the attributes and information about that account that I really care about, right? So other components on the page don't necessarily have that same capability. So when you tie these lightning events with that dashboard, then you're gonna start seeing your, your changes that are reflected on the dashboard can then actually impact other things uh, within your Lightning framework. So let me talk a little bit about um, how these Lightning events look from an overview perspective and we'll start talking about the structure here. So forgive me for the crude drawings, I basically created these on my own. Uh, essentially what we're looking at here on the screen, however, this big gray box here is kind of what we're framing up for our demo. It's a big lightning page, right? And in that lightning page, we could have some dashboard component associated that has some embedded components in that, such as graphs, charts, widgets, bar charts, whatever, right? <clears throat> There's a little arrow that pulls out of that dashboard in this diagram that shows a list view component. So that's gonna be one of the components that we actually interact with in our demo later on. And so what I wanna say in this image is basically when you select something on the dashboard, it, it's an event, it's a selection changed event in, in particular for, for Einstein Analytics. And essentially when that event fires off, there is an action that is created that corresponds with that. And essentially that action can then do all sorts of things, such as you know when that event fires off for a particular user or a particular manager user, we can do different things 
of what happens after that, and then whatever the data is that then pulls back, or the data visibility, or the real level details, can then be used in that action in many different ways, right? So on the right hand side over here, you know, obviously, Lightning components can fire off these events based on the user's interaction with the dashboard. Then events can contain those data elements. I'm calling them like row level details, or the data payload. That's really what we're gonna see in our demo is gonna be what gets sent down to these other applications or other components within the application. And then of course those other components can use that information to store and, and display on the screen, all right? So we'll move forward just a little bit and look at some of the architecture. So here's our demo in a nutshell in Lucidchart. So essentially in this big gray box again, here we are looking at it a different way, a lightning page. And in our demo, we're gonna be looking at an embedded dashboard that has the capability to slice and dice information, as you know and love about Einstein dashboards. But essentially in this diagram I wanna show, and it kind of works, I want your eyes to kind of follow a rainbow pattern from left to right uh, as we go over the horizon there. So <clears throat> you can see the list view component is also highlighted in yellow. It's the recipient component of that payload, that data visibility or the real level details that we're gonna send. So in the comments there, I just kind of pointed out, the user would then select something on the dashboard, step one. Some event fires, right? That user interaction with that dashboard is the event, and it's gonna tell an action to do something, right? So we start stepping into step two here, which essentially is affected by that selection changed event that we talked about. So when you click on something on a dashboard, that fires off this information, then the action then takes over. And so we've got some controllers that then take place uh, in, the, in the framework, in the code, which I'm gonna walk through here in a second which essentially those actions are then calling out data elements or we could pull specific record level details, so on and so forth, right? <clears throat> a little cloud for the event framework, that's just to kind of represent what happens in the controllers. And then essentially down in the event payload, that makes that data visible and accessible to these other components that are dependent on that information. And that kind of creates that unified application, right, where you've got a dashboard talking to lightning components. And then last but not least, that fourth bullet is just to really highlight. When you pull this information back, it may not be structured in the way that you want. It may actually look pretty crazy. In our demo, it did until we created a helper class, which essentially was the last step, um, which was really important for us to kind of frame up what data to bring back. Uh, do we need to do any uh, additional um, kind of uh, modeling around some of that data? How many records do we display in the recipient components, so on and so forth, right? It's basically the UI UX stuff that we're gonna handle in the recipient components, right? So that handler class is gonna help with that. So everybody following along so far? Let's go ahead and dive into the code, because this is gonna be the part where I lose you, so I'm gonna try to be a hype man and keep everybody engaged, right? All right, let's move forward. So. <clears throat> pardon me, uh, an aura component. So this is kind of what we were talking about earlier in the presentation. They pointed out that there's gotta be a component in there. So there's other things that go along with it. So a lightning event uses three things, a component, some controllers, a controller or multiple controllers, and then a handler class, right? And so we just covered some of those things, but I wanna point out on the screen, this highlighted section here, where it shows the event, that's our little selection changed event. That's what we were talking about. And it's coupled with this action which basically is just handle selection changed, right? So we're gonna see that being force fed into the controller here in just a moment on the next slide. Uh, but I wanted to point out those three components. So there's a component up here, our controller, and then the helper class, right? And so really what's happening is this, this aura handler, uh, you know, we've got that aura component there. It's gonna basically pass that information to the action and then make it available for this client side controller. So that controller is gonna then tell the system kind of what we need to do and what what types of actions to take, right? So on the next screen here, we're actually diving in one deeper level into the controller. So this is what the client side controller is doing. It basically uses that data to identify the appropriate action, right? So in that top left hand corner, you see handle selection change is highlighted there and the functions are bringing back the component information, the event, the helper class. It's kind of consuming all that information, making it available for this type of action, right? Now I'm gonna hyper focus just a little bit on the logic around whether the owner uh, like the drill down capabilities, uh, like who the owner is and who we select. So in our demo, you're gonna see Dave points out the owner is gonna be a specific manager of subordinate users, right? And in this case, people that own opportunities. And so keep that in mind as we go through this code because I wanna make sure that you kind of follow along to when we get to the demo, you're gonna see Dave point that out uh, <clears throat> pretty clearly. So 
In this case, we put a couple options in there. If you choose a manager user, do something. If you choose a subordinate user, do something else. And really, the important piece there is data visibility. So if you pull back a manager user, I want to see the manager's information. I want to see my subordinate users, which is kind of backwards in our actual Sorry. roles. Uh, but <clears throat> but you, get, you get what I'm talking about there. So moving forward, uh, once the action's identified, whether a manager or a subordinate user is selected, then the client-side controller is then going to interact with that server-side controller and receive a response. And so essentially the helper method call out here in the bottom portion is just to basically start framing up some of that UI UX context. So once the action's identified, the client-side controller then interacts with server. And the server-side controller, we're gonna take a look at it here in just a second because there's some specific actions that we're gonna do there to pull back the appropriate records. So <clears throat> the client-side controller example continued. Essentially what we're saying is that uh, in this case, with our opportunity list view, we're gonna handle this response, and the list view component is really kind of the recipient of that data payload that we were talking about. It then determines the output action on where that's gonna go, and then it calls the helper class to say, hey, now that I've got this payload of information, and it's in the visibility that I want, now I need to start determining what I do with it, how I frame it up, what information to share, how many rows of data are gonna be visible in the recipient component, so on and so forth, right? Everybody following along? So let's look at that server-side controller. This is my favorite, because when we get <coughs> into calling some of these uh, controllers and bringing it in, and we make our selection, and we say maybe a manager was selected, I wanna go get the opportunities related to this manager's data oh. visibility, right? It's gonna be everybody that owns opportunities that exists underneath that particular manager, right? But in the server-side controller, we're actually calling out the data that we wanna pull back. So if the manager name was selected, then the select statement fires, right? So we're basically just querying data as it relates to the opportunity record. And in this case, you know, account name, amount, close date, stage name, the owner, so on and so forth, right? It's basic stuff. Uh, but I really wanna flex our muscles just a little bit and point out that the tail end of that select statement, order by ED weighted amount descending order, right? So we actually created a little bit of extra I think on this one, a little extra. Where, where the uh, Einstein discovery model, we created one to basically be a card on the page land as well that impacts the lightning event. Uh, and essentially, it is just a weighted average of uh, opportunity amount. So that's gonna be what we want to bubble up these opportunity records by the amount of the records. And so it's gonna show that the top, the highest amount records in descending order, and then we're gonna use the helper class, which we'll see now, is going to, yeah, we can see we're on the helper there. This is basically just gonna be framing up the information and paginate that result set into the recipient control or the recipient component. And so essentially it's just gonna frame up, we've got the data visibility, we've got all the information we need, we've got all the records we need now. We actually have the field level details that we wanna show, which we saw on the previous screen. Now what do we do with it? The helper class is gonna frame that up in the component that's receiving this payload and it's gonna tell it what to do, okay? So with that, Dave, I think I'm gonna turn it back over to you. And what we're gonna see Dave do in our demo is actually walk through opening up an embedded dashboard in the lightning page. Then he's gonna show how selecting a manager then impacts some of the list view component. We've got a record component in there. We have a discovery model output that, that pops in. And so Dave, why don't you take it away and uh, show us what we've got. All right, who's ready to actually see this stuff in action and see what it looks like? Me. All right, let's do it. All right, so hopefully the demo gods will be favorable to us today. I think they will be. <laughs> so um, what we've got here is an Einstein analytics dashboard embedded within a lightning page. Um, and so this is an out of the box capability. You can do this really simply. I'm gonna show you how actually. Come over here, we can edit page. And the Einstein analytics dashboard is just another component that you can put on your page, right? So we've got this list view component down here, we've got this opportunity record component, we've got this Einstein insights card. I don't, that's, a, that's a little secret we're saving for the, uh, towards the end of the demo here. You'll get to see what that is in an action. Um, and then up here we've got our dashboard, right? So if I click on this dashboard, we see some attributes, some properties we can set and determine how high, you know, we, how much space we wanna give on the page to the dashboard. Uh, but over here in this filter section, as well, um, we could have, if we wanted to, have applied some filter logic to just right out of the box, slap this dashboard in, and then say it's a dashboard maybe around opportunities related to an account. 
we could actually filter this dashboard to only show um, uh, those opportunities that are associated with the account record that you are on, say if this was an account page layout, right? But we did a little something different here. So going over here, same dashboard, actually that is not the same dashboard, but this is, same dashboard. <laughs> and um, um, what we've done here is we've actually taken a demo org in Salesforce. So you know your standard trailhead data, 10,000 rows. We did do a little data manipulation uh, just to sh uh, showcase some concepts. And uh, then we ran that through a discovery model, right? So we've got Einstein demo org, created a discovery model, and what this discovery model was, was on propensity to close, or the likelihood of an opportunity to close. So the data's fake, but all the concepts are real that we're showing you here. And the idea behind this dashboard would be, I'm coming in, I'm a sales executive, uh, I wanna see how my sales organization is doing, right? So looks like so far we've closed 35 million here, right? We've got 69 million in our quota, and so we've got 34 million, right? And we've got two pr prediction numbers down here. An Einstein forecast number, which is a weighted pipe lumber. And what I've done is basically taking the probability of the opportunity multiplied by the amount. And when you do that in aggregate for a large amount of opportunities, you get a type of forecast, a weighted pipe forecast, right? And then we also have the field forecast, which is based on what my field reps think is likely to happen in terms of the likelihood based on the, the stage or the forecast category of the opportunity in terms of the opportunity closing. And we see there's a little delta there, right? Those aren't perfectly aligned because Einstein's making some predictions, it's got some information, and the field reps have some information. So we've got both those numbers up here. As we move from right to left in this next widget, what we see is a visualization that's showing us um, the delta, the difference between what the reps are forecasting and what the field is forecasting, I mean, sorry, what the reps are forecasting and what Einstein is forecasting for the reps. And this is organized by our sales managers. In this case, you know, we call them RVPs, regional vice presidents, but these are our sales managers here. And right off the bat, I can see negative 13 million. That's a pretty big delta with Julia Chavez, right? So Julia is one of our managers, and I want you to watch what happens when I click on Julia here. A few things happen, right? So our opportunity list view over here that was empty, we now have the opportunities associated with Julie Chavez, right? So you also noticed that these components over here on the left changed as well. These components on the left are just standard Einstein analytics dashboard. It's through the power of faceting that they got updated and filtered. But what happened down here in this lower less section in the opportunity list view is uh, basically the magic of what Pat just described coming into play. So when I clicked on Julie Chavez, we fired off an event, a selection changed event. We were able to capture that event and then basically drive and change what we see in the opportunity list view here, right? So now we've got our opportunities related to Julie Chavez. But at least let's keep going down the rabbit hole. I wanna go a little further. So now I'm seeing just the reps that are related to Julie Chavez up here in my dashboard component. And I noticed Irene Kelly's got this 15 million in terms of the Einstein forecast, and her field forecast is eight and a half million. Kind of feels like maybe she's sandbagging a little bit. Maybe she's not giving me the whole story. So I want to keep drilling in. So I'm going to click here. Again, our Einstein analytics dashboard components automatically facet. And then I'm going to switch pages so that I get a listing of the opportunities related to Irene Kelly, right? So what we have here is this is a pyramid chart in Einstein Analytics. And we can see on the right side, we can see the weighted amount that the field's telling me they think they're gonna make. And over here on the left, we can see the Einstein amount. And right at the top, I see a pretty big delta, right? So on Einstein, I see 3.3 million for this top opportunity with a Garrett 1512, fantastic opportunity name, by the way. <laughs> and, and on the left, we see the, uh, uh, the field saying, eh, you know, based on the probability, the weighted amount for that's 1.6 million. So let's see what's going on here. So I'm gonna click on this bar. Helps if I actually click it. And now we generated some more events, right? So we fired off some more selection change events. We captured those events. And now we're able to basically drive this opportunity record component down here. And we've got all the details uh, related to that opportunity that we just selected. Additionally, we populated 
this Einstein discovery card, right? And as part of discovery, what comes with that is you, you don't just get the number or the score, you also get um, reasons for why something is uh, happening, right? And so we can see that the leading causes for the score that it gives that opportunity, which is 36.3% is what it's, it's scoring it at, by the way, uh, in terms of uh, propensity to close, is that negative 21% is because we've not scheduled an executive meeting. And so in our data set, scheduling executive meetings is highly correlated to closing opportunities. So if you're not doing that, they tend to not close, right? Um, the lead source is trade show. So we, you know, trade shows are a little bit worse lead source for us, right? And we have insights here um, that we're able to glean um, and we have a drill path, a click path, uh, that allows us to navigate through, ask the next question, and to drill further and further into the data. Uh, we, we could keep going here, right? So obviously we could now take the next step, which would be to action this. So we could edit this opportunity record, right? I could come up here in my dashboard and do something like uh, create a new event, uh, chatter out some information. Um, we could really, any uh, lightning action that you could create that's tied to the record, you could expose here. Um, so we have the ability to, to do a lot of different things. Um, um, but you can see that the power really of combining these lightning events with the analytics is that you provide the unified experience, right? Really the intelligent experience um, by combining these different components. All right, so bringing it home. Jumping back into the presentation here. What, what did we go through today? What did we see? Right? So we talked about Einstein analytics, sort of the, the key functional capabilities of it, why you would want to use it. We walked through lightning events and the power of the lightning event framework and sort of architecturally how that works. Um, and then we talked about how we could make that work with Einstein analytics and demonstrated that capability with the demo. Um, so this really concludes the core of our presentation. Um, I know everyone has lots of options in terms of sessions, so thank you for choosing ours. Um, and at this point, I'd like to point you to some additional resources and give a shout out as well. A lot of this work that we did uh, was based on the work of a guy at Salesforce, a product manager, his name's Skip Sauls, uh, super solid guy. You can go out and, and Google Skip Sauls, um, Lightning and Analytics. He's got some videos out there. Um, and then, you know, a great place to start if you wanna dig deeper into Aura and Lightning Events as well, um, is in the Aura Components Basic and the Connect Components with Events. So if you Google those keywords in the parentheses, uh, that should be the first thing that pops up for you. Uh, as well as, we'll, we'll, we'll post the deck out there, it will get posted as well, but that can take a couple of weeks sometimes. Um, feel free to reach out to us, we would love to hear from you. So um, if you've got questions after the session, shoot an email to, to me or Pat. Uh, pretty easy, Dave at atrium.ai, Patrick at atrium.ai. We're new companies and, and Pat and I were there early, so we gotta, we gotta pick our names for the email addresses, which is always a plus. Um, but at this point, we'll uh, open it up to questions. Yeah. Thank you guys for your attendance. If you guys have any questions or anything, please feel free to come up and we'll, we'll chat about the content from today. Otherwise, thank you for attending and go have some fun at Dreamforce. Be safe out there. Thank you.